This game is rated M and is intended for mature audiences. I'm just gonna say, right now. So for those of you who don't know, for those of you who I didn't join for the other two routes, so, um, this game that I- this version of the game I'm playing, there's a couple different versions out there. I'm playing the Steam version. This is the censored version of the game. Like, the original game is apparently even raunchier than this. I'm willing to bet that what just happened is we probably skipped a sex scene. Because there are sex scenes in the uncensored version. Thank God we can skip those. It just felt like that scene abrupted very- ended abruptly. I'm not complaining, I'm just saying- I, my guess is that we missed one, which, thank you. Thank you, Jesus. The forecast called for rain, but instead we're greeted with a clear and beautiful morning. Not that the weather outside has too much effect on our current lifestyle, especially in Yumiko's case. Ah, uh, no, no, I'm not gonna... S no, here's the thing. I, I thought that it would mean no nudity. No, apparently, apparently the no, um... <clears throat> the censored version, it apparently cuts out some jokes, which I'm like... Already the jokes are really raunchy. How bad were they in the uncensored version? And it cuts out the actual sex. It also cuts out most of the nudity. There was one CG in Sachi's route that I don't know how that slipped past the censors, but I had to black out the screen when I did that. Like, I had I had to do that. It was a very lewd scene of Sachi... Um, Washing our back, but instead of using a washcloth, she was using her, um, obobs, so to speak. So is Yumiko just, again, is she just under house arrest now? Like, is she just never going outside? Because it's like, we can't let the girl know. And we can't let the world know there's a girl here. But the windows are open, so I guess she's, I guess she does leave occasionally. But people only think that you, how does this work? I don't know. Are all, are these all ones you've finished already? I gesture at a sizable pile of hardcover books sitting at Yumiko's bedside. <laughs> Why does she look like kind of evil there? <laughs> She's like, yeah, I read these books. Uh, hmm. Uh, yeah, all right. No, I was just trying to remember when they're due back at the library. Yumiko's currently a fugitive of sorts. Naturally, that restricts her freedom of movement. She leaves the apartment mostly at night, when few ped pedestrians are around, and only when I've given her the all-clear. The vast majority of her time is spent indoors. But of course, she'd go crazy just sitting here around all day long, so I take periodic trips to the library to borrow her large quantities of books. So yeah, at least he has that sense to be like, she needs to get out occasionally, she needs stuff to do. Uh, were these any good? Yes. <laughs> Aww. I'm really liking this relationship, actually. This is a cute one. They have their problems, but who doesn't? It doesn't sound like Yumiko's saying that just for my sake. Probably her honest thoughts. That said, spending all this time alone must be a little rough emotionally. Yumiko was on her own more often than not, even when we were in the dorm, but she had a cell phone, easy access to the internet, and above all else, boisterous friends who kept fiends lively. By comparison, she's only got one antisocial man for company in this cramped apartment, and he's not even around for most of the day. There aren't many chances for us to do much of anything together. Gotta start thinking about the next move pretty soon. We can't keep up this lifestyle forever. A decisive solution is going to be necessary. Not that I really know what that would look like yet. I suppose there's no choice but to cautiously observe the Sakaki family's movements and piece together a strategy. Yep, yeah, yeah, effectively, she is under house arrest. It's understandable. Hmm? The cell phone in my breast pocket buzzes quietly only once. Ever since the kidnapping, it hasn't been doing much of that. There aren't many people who know the number. Most of them are back at, in the Mahama Academy dorm, and I told them in no uncertain terms to, to not call except in an outright emergency. Under these circumstances, there's only one plausible reason my phone would ring. Figures. Glancing at the screen, I nod to myself and get to my feet. <laughs> it's a message from my good friend, the Nigerian prince. He needs my help. Yumiko doesn't know who it's from, or even that I received a message. Probably a bit disconcerting to see me get up so suddenly for no apparent reason. Yeah, just for a while. Even so, at times like these, Yumiko never asks where I'm going or why. I guess that means she trusts me. But there's still a clear shadow of unease on her face. 
I'll be back in an hour or so. Lightly patting her on the head, I try to offer her a little reassurance. She must understand rationally that I'll be back soon enough, but it's only natural to feel a little unsettled when your only connection to the outside world vanishes. It's kind of interesting how my, my perspective on the characters has changed. So, like, for example, at the beginning, I actually kind of liked Machina. Like, her voice was annoying, but back then she was a lot shyer. And just, like, actually, I thought, and I also thought she was, like, a six-year-old girl, and we were just kind of being, like, hey, we're gonna be your, <laughs> we're gonna be your older brother and teach you about the world. But then I realized, oh, no, she's a romance option. That's icky. And she got very lewd. But, like, I, when I, I played Sachi's route first, because I thought she was best girl. I don't think that anymore. Then I played Mishiru's route, and I'm like, nah, I think she's best girl. Now I think Yumiko's best girl. I suppose people are saying, oh, man, Artie, if you play Amine's route, you'll think she's best girl. That, that, I pretty much guarantee you that will not happen. <laughs> Yeah. Just... <laughs> what the heck is happening in in my Twitch chat? I, I don't even know. Well, just move on. I casually descend the apartment stairs, then glance around the area as I head into an alley. After two quick left turns, I clamber over a rusted old gas meter and make my way down a shadowy lane to a dead end. <laughs> no, you can't introduce it to House Girlfriend. Ooh, an alleyway. What a nice CG. I'm always looking for good CGs. This is a place I scouted out beforehand. It's a blind spot from pretty much any angle, with very little risk of being overheard. Maybe we're not at the end of the route. I kind of thought we were nearing the climax, but maybe that was just, like, the first part. Maybe this maybe this is, like, the new Batman movie, and there's, like, just gonna be five climaxes. I lean against the far wall, take one last careful look around, and then I finally take out my phone. But still, this stream... This stream has been great! Like, there's been very few cringy moments, and it's actually been an exciting and enjoyable read. Like, I've thoroughly been enjoying myself doing this. This is the this is the part of Fruit of Grisea that keeps me coming back! JB's voice hasn't changed much since our escape. Same business-like tone as always. There's an oddly upbeat song playing in the background, though. Seems she's got her mini-component stereo on. We're not exactly thriving, but at least we have our health. <laughs> As a matter of fact... When did Ichigaya start investing in mind-reading re research? JB intersperses her re re retorts with heavy, exasperated sighs. This incident has, of course, been an enormous nuisance for her as my boss. The case officer bears ultimate responsibility for their agent's actions. She's temporarily demoted until the matter is resolved. And they went so far as to set up an internal investigation to determine if she was conspiring with me. <laughs> I mean, I go off topic on tangents all the time, so I mean, I guess it's, oh, I guess it's gonna happen. In the end, they decided to, uh, I acted alone and cleared JB's name. That's the only reason she's even able to talk with me like this. Of course, I'm still using my untraceable phone with its encrypted connection for these chats. To be honest, a few hours of groveling at her feet wouldn't really cut it at this point, but there's no point worrying about paying her back until I stop running up the tab. Yeah, I guess I'm starting to get the hang of this manual labor thing. Anyway, to what do I owe the pleasure? <laughs> Sorry, but the only re way I'm ever reviewing myself is to my best new friend, Takashi. I owe him a turkey. A tempting suggestion, but unfortunately I'm otherwise engaged at the moment. Like, in marriage or engaged in work? Should have made your offer earlier. Sorry, but I'm not a big fan of changing horses midstream. Let's drop the subject, shall we? I had a cactus in my room? <laughs> I didn't even notice. And, uh, how's Georgie doing? Nothing. Leave the cactus alone. I'm pretty sure it's insect-free. JB promptly hands up on me in typically efficient in a typically efficient style. I flip the cell phone shut. No movements at present, eh? 
The main meaning of that formulaic conversation lay in the music playing in the background. We have a simple system where the genre of the song communicates some basic information. Today, it was a bossa nova Hawaiian beat arrangement, meaning Ichigai's search is continuing with no apparent progress. No imminent threats, but we can't let our guard down. Now that her name's been cleared, she's probably no longer under surveillance, but JB's a straight-laced military type with a powerful respect for authority. She's not capable of casually leaking me de detailed information. So instead, she gives me small hints using this sort of indirect method. I really am due for one hell of a marathon groveling session when this is all over. But instead, you're probably just going to insult and berate her. Seriously though, JB, what kind of a question was that? Her casual query about my cactus at the end there took me by surprise. I've never owned such a plant in my life. Okay, I wasn't crazy. I'm like, I don't remember seeing a cactus in his dorm. What is this? It was a clear reference to the prickly individual currently sharing my room. As for the worm eaten, that probably should go without saying. Well, I guess it wouldn't be too strange to interpret it that way. Whatever the circumstances may be, I'm a man and Yumiko's a woman. No! No, come on! Don't do that! We ran away hand in hand. We're living together. It's not hard to see why someone might imagine something along those lines. Oh, wait. She's just imagining that, or are you guys actually doing that? For a woman of JB's age and personality, it probably seems like the natural assumption to make. Still, the fact of the matter is nothing's happening between- Oh! Yeah! Oh! Wow! A wholesome good relationship! Who could have thought? Wow! Now this is- I can't believe it. I truly can't. But- Let's take bets how long that's going to last. <laughs> Either that or he's just lying to his own internal monologue. It's questionable whether Yumiko's interested in being... Oh, come on! I don't, I don't want to read that! <laughs> I don't have a clear sense of how she feels about me. At the very least, I think she trusts me. Thanks to JB's unnecessary prying, I've got a new question weighing slightly on my mind. I'm sure that will be arranged. The room's silent except... For Wait, is so maybe... Maybe there's a second futon off-screen. Maybe there's a second futon off-screen. That's what I'm going with. The room's silent except for the irregular clacking of our chopsticks. Yumiko's never been the type to chatter on and on while she eats. In fact, she seems to make an effort to be as quiet as possible at the table. Probably has something to do with that good breeding of hers. I tend not to talk too much during meals myself, but today my silence is deliberate. In other words, instead of trying to make conversation, I'm focusing my thoughts on the matter from this afternoon. What exactly does Yumiko think of me? She's living with you. She ran away with you. I, like... I would assume she at least has feelings for you. It's like something a middle schooler would be worrying about. That said, considering our very intimate living circumstances, the presence of or absence of romantic feelings is a serious matter. If I jump to a mistaken conclusion, I couldn't end up making Yumiko deeply uncomfortable in the one refuge she has left. I need to proceed very carefully. That's true. That's true. Wait, you are introspective, too. <laughs> Let's not play the song, Let's Get Down Tonight. <laughs> Let's play something more, uh... Let's play something more amicable, like, um... Wild Canyon. Still, guess it couldn't hurt to ask. There's something I've been wondering about that seems tangentially related to the question at hand. Seems like a good place to begin. Hey, Yumiko. Why are you still using my last name? Yumiko's chopstick stopped dead midair. Her pupils shrinking suddenly wide inside, <laughs> inside wide open eyes. Not a complicated question, right? Just wondering why you've never called me Yuji. She's like, I hate that name. I knew this boy in high school, in uh, middle school, who was Yuji. He was a prick. I hate the name forever now. I'm consistently using the intimate first name with Yumiko, but she's still going with Kazumi-kun. Is that an implicit signal to not to try and get any closer? Does it have some other meaning? Knowing that might give me an answer to the more sensitive question I've been pondering. You know, this is actually kind of a slick way of going about it. Like, I kind of like that. It's subtle, but it kind of gives you a good idea. Unfortunately, Yumiko appears to have frozen solid. For a good five seconds, she just stares at me. Finally, as if remembering to move, she begins to flop her mouth slightly open and closed like a goldfish. The words that finally emerged from her mouth are far from the conclusive reply I was hoping for. I, maybe, maybe this is different in Japan, but at least in America, like, 
I'm not gonna say it's rude to call someone by their last name, but, like, it's really unusual. Like, it happens in the military, but, like, I... Hmm. Maybe it's a, maybe it's a Japan fan where you use like surnames primarily unless you're like really close with someone, but I don't know for sure. I'm <laughs> I'm just a guy trying to make his way through the universe. <laughs> Staring down at her omelet as she pokes it with her chopsticks, she mumbles vague non-answers. Well, dang, they got enough money for omelets, so they can't be doing that bad off. <laughs> Well, yeah, nobody calls me colorful, because that's not my name, that's just an adjective that describes me. <laughs> I only have one name, and it's Artie. <laughs> Yumiko abruptly pivots to a question of her own in an attempt to regain control of the conversation. Being honest with her at this point would probably be a mistake. No reason in particular, just a little curious. What's wrong? Were you expecting something else? Oh no. Oh no. <laughs> Rule number one. If a woman makes this face and says, no, it's fine, it's not fine. <laughs> I, I'm not married, but I know that much. <laughs> Yumiko's slightly flushed face pulls back to its original distance, her expression changing to one of restrained anger. The omelette she was fiddling with has been thoroughly dissected into a few miserable yellow chunks. And in the end, I didn't even get an answer to my question. Mm. That was literally the Majora's Mask Mayor grunt. <laughs> that reaction was just too ambiguous. From one angle, it looks like Yumiko's actively hiding romantic feelings for me. But you could also interpret it as an attempt to deflect my interest. Why is it so complicated? To be perfectly honest, I'm not the most perceptive man alive when it comes to these matters. Analyzing Yumiko's feelings based off of that conversation is far beyond my meager capabilities. Quietly slurping down my miso soup, I glance over at the young woman in question. She's got an irritable expression on her face. I don't quite understand the thought process, but if she's displeased with me for trying to upset the status quo, I guess she isn't interested for the moment. Or she's like, Bro, why are you moving faster? <laughs> I can't answer that, Simpsons R.S., because I don't know. That night, even after turning out the lights and slipping under my blanket, I couldn't manage to fall asleep. Thus far, the other two roots did not end with us getting married and having kids, but also it didn't go that far in the future, so... Also, I'm pretty sure Michiru did not want kids. She mentioned, like, I hate kids at one point, which I'm like, what? Eh, I don't know. That night, even after turning out the lights and slipping under my blanket, I couldn't fall asleep. Yumiko's sleeping at my side, as always. No, they aren't! This is one futon! What the heck? <laughs> well, maybe they can only afford one futon. You, you work with what you have, I, I suppose. But as I watch, her regular peaceful breathing begins to change slightly. Every once in a while, Yumiko grimaces and moans softly in her sleep. Might be some sort of a nightmare. Sometimes it sounds like she's trying to speak, although the words aren't intelligible. Don't worry, Yumiko. I gently touch her forehead, then stroke my hand up through her hair. Platonically. Her expression seems to soften a little. Maybe the words brought her some relief. My own feelings had been an open question for me for some time, but as I look down at Yumiko's face, I can feel something like an answer emerge. The girl's definitely special to me. That vague desire to keep her safe has grown into something personal and affectionate. But that doesn't mean I'm going to push her to return my feelings. Answering them or ignoring them is just one of the many freedoms Yumiko's finally managed to gain. JB's malicious provocation nearly drove me astray, but originally I hadn't even considered the possibility of making a move. Still, who knows what might happen down the road. If the two of us stay together, I'll probably get an answer to those feelings eventually. Well, it's, got, it's bound to come up eventually! I want to put an end to this fugitive lifestyle as soon as possible, but there's no need for us to rush when it comes to figuring out our relationship. We trust each other. That should be enough for now. But as long as you're not doing the nasty... But not long thereafter, events took an abrupt and somewhat expected turn. Human beings don't act on the basis of reason alone. Soon I would gain a new appreciation for that undeniable fact. Ain't that the truth? We are creatures of reason. We are also creatures of emotion. And they don't always coincide. I don't like where this is going. I don't like where this intro sentence is going along with the music in the background. 
Desires are a natural part of life. Mm-hmm, sure. Putting aside the basic cravings for food, sleep, and excretion that helps keep us alive, there's a whole range of secondary urges that are at least possible to endure. Sexual desire is often called the strongest among these. I don't like where this is going. As a fairly typical example of the male gender, I've got a fair amount of lust to go around myself. Yeah, I know. My previous employer actually went out of their way to provide us ways to scratch this particular itch. Uh-huh, I don't want to hear more. However, when it comes to the female sex drive, my knowledge is somewhat spotty. It's long been said that men and women experience the sexual urges that begin with puberty in a very different ways. And I've interacted with a number of females who seem, at a glance, completely lacking in such desires. Sakaka Yumiko would be one such case in point. I don't like where this is going. We've been living in one room for months now, spreading out our bedding only a few feet away from it. Wait, oh, we do have separate beds? There's definitely only one bed on the screen, but okay, cool. Yay! Another win for Yuji and Yumiko. But nonetheless, she's given every indication of viewing me as part of the furniture, rather than a member of the opposite sex. It had been a long day on the job. After dinner, I went to bed a little earlier than usual. Yumiko didn't have anything in particular to do either, so she climbed into her futon at the same time and soon fell quietly asleep. Can't fall asleep tonight for some reason. Although Yumiko's already been breathing quietly a few feet away, it's proving very difficult to nod off myself. After a while, I close my eyes and just pretend to sleep. There wasn't really any thought behind that. It's pretty common for me to have trouble sleeping, and sometimes this helps. No reason to disturb Yumiko by tossing and turning around either. But the young woman in question abruptly sits up, pulls back her blanket, and walks quickly off toward the bathroom. Yumiko returns quietly to the bedroom, only a minute or two so later. I lie quietly, wide awake, waiting for the sound of her slipping back into her futon. <laughs> She's like, I am so done with this, which doesn't seem to be happening. What's this? For some reason, Yumiko doesn't seem too eager to get back in bed. I open one eye just a crack. She's standing expressionless between our futons, staring fixedly down at me. She's like, So, um, you didn't clean the bathroom like I asked. What up? Oh no, she's watching me sleep. I don't like where this is going. After muttering a question to no one in particular, Yumiko quietly lowers herself to the ground next to me, her legs splaying out to one side. Mm-hmm. What's this girl thinking? I decide to keep breathing softly and allow her to think I'm unconscious. Hypothetically, if she viewed me as an enemy or bore some grudge, this can be interpreted as the preliminary stage of an assassination attempt. I don't think that's going to happen. I'm confident that's not the case right now. Yumiko definitely trusts me. That said, we're talking about a woman who tried to slap me in the face the first day we met and spent a good amount of time attempting to stab me. That's in the past now, but she's definitely prone to expressing herself in violent ways. That's... Imagine saying that! That's just saying this this woman tried to slap me as soon as we met, and this woman tried to stab me on multiple occasions. But we're past that now. It's like Really? Really? Just to be on the safe side, I focus my attention on Yumiko without opening my eyes, and wait alertedly for her next movement. However, what comes next takes me completely by surprise. Kiss? Yumiko swallows audibly, holds her breath. And something supple touches my lips. For a moment, I thought it might be her finger, but there's no way it could feel quite this soft. This is when Yuji opens his eyes. Surprise! I'm awake! The instant I feel her breath on my nose, I realize that she's pressing her lips against mine. <laughs> I love how they're having their first kiss, and Zaras is just like, Oh, yes, I have 10,000 arty bucks! <laughs> a sweet, distinctive scent tickles the inside of my nose. Um... Oh, wait, oh, whoops, didn't mean to skip past that. Uh, I'm... I think I can use this as the thumbnail. I was not I was about to say, like, the last one, I'm like, I'm not sure if I could use that last uh, CG as a thumbnail, because it looked a little on the lewd side, but this, I think, should be fine. Oh, crap! Unfortunately, I can't keep my lips from twitching a little. Yumiko instantly jerks back. Yumiko stares down at me in an expression of absolute shock. <laughs> she does have nice eyes. I don't know what she was thinking, but if she's frightened enough to cut things off here, that's fine by me. So she doing the whole the Snow White prince kiss, eh? Hopefully I'll be able to fall asleep soon. 
No, stop kissing me while I'm in my while I'm sleeping. This is weird. What again? Once again, Yumiko presses her mouth against mine, and this time she's a lot bolder about it. What is she thinking? Considering how things have been until now, this is just incomprehensible. I mean, if this were, say, Amine, well, Amine would have. I'm not even gonna finish that. I'm not. I'm not reading that. That would probably be the thought process. But right now, we're talking about Yumiko. It's hard to imagine she's got that sort of a sadistic streak. So why is she doing this? Maybe she's just curious? After months of living together intimately with a member of the opposite gender, Yumiko's developed an interest in sex. But the subject's too awkward to discuss, so she decides to try some furtive exploration. That's a fairly reasonable explanation. In fact, I almost hope it's true. Considering how badly Yumiko's unhappy past has weighed her down, seeing her act in such a... human way would be something to celebrate. Might be it's a sign that she's starting to break out of that defensive shell. Um, kissing someone in their sleep is not a good sign of breaking out of your shell, though. That's that's kind of a bad sign. You know, maybe be up front with it. Even as I'm pondering these matters, the girl continues to mash her mouth against mine in an increasingly ardent fashion. Guess I've got no choice but to call things to a halt somehow. Yumiko presumably believes I'm asleep and oblivious, but keeping up that charade at this point might give her the wrong idea. Normally speaking, anyone except the deepest of deep sleepers is going to wake up when someone's kissing them this intensely. Feel bad about interrupting, but for her sake and mine, the girl needs to learn that she's playing with fire. In order to defend my dignity, educate Yumiko, and prevent any unfortunate physical reactions, I reluctantly take action. Cut it out. Turning my face away from Yumiko, I forcibly tear our lips apart. <laughs> Flinching with shock, Yumiko jumps away from me. Her eyes open to perfect circles as it suddenly dawns on her that she's taken things too far. Her mouth's trembling uncontrollably. It's a pretty pitiful spectacle. She... <laughs> Guys, this is where I want to play a fun little game that I call Would It Still Be Okay If The Rules Were Reversed? Now, it's probably easy to assume, like, oh, this is a sweet, cute scene. I, I just want to ask, if it was Yuji kissing Yumiko in her sleep, would it still be acceptable, or would it be creepy? I'm not going to answer for you, it's just something to think about. If you want to think about whether this is acceptable or not. Yeah, she looks at me with an uncharacteristic expression of absolute cowed terror. That doesn't look like absolute cowed terror. She's waiting to see how I'll respond after discovering her misdeed. Cut it out. Julia. Using every ounce of acting ability I possess, I continue mumbling in a sleep-addled voice. Seriously, Julia, save it for when we're awake, alright? I repeat the name clearly to make sure that Yumiko catches it. What are you doing, you doofus? Okay, yeah, this is not the right way to go about it, but you're like, Man, I kind of like Yumiko, but I don't like know if she likes me. Then she's kissing you in your sleep, in your sleep and you're like, Okay, like, that's clear indication she likes you, so why not be like... Hey, uh, you woke me up, but you know what? It's okay. I like you too. Boom, you get together. Instead, you're like, oh, I'll confuse her more. Yes, this is a good idea. I love Julia. And now she's going to get jealous and like, this is, how do you, why do you think this would be a good idea? Once again, ladies and gentlemen, our protagonist, Kazumi Yuji. Ah. And then I very obviously fall back asleep. Or pretend to. It was a pretty crappy performance by any standard, but... <laughs> She's like, he likes Julia. Box cutter. <laughs> At the moment, it's much more convenient for Yumiko to believe that I was talking in my sleep, so she easily accepts the charade. I can hear her let out a short sigh of what sounds like profound relief. It's obvious how shaken up she was by the experience. I can't help feeling a little guilty. But still, I had no idea Yumiko was interested in this sort of thing. Once again, I reflect on her sudden lapse of judgment. Her previous circumstances were abnormal enough that it wasn't always obvious, but Yumiko has desires like anyone else. Guess it might be time to think about her needs as well. I think this warrants a slight change in the status quo. Tomorrow, I'll find the right moment and bring up the matter openly. No more indirect nosing around. Bro, the moment was right then when it happened. Like, come on! G come on, man! It's rather, no, an extremely dangerous gamble, but I also stand to gain a clear answer to that unresolved question from a few days ago. Yumiko lets out a sigh of overflowing with Inui. 
I don't know that word, then burrows back under the covers of her bed. Sorry, Yumiko. And while I'm at it, sorry, Julia. With a few words of apology to my roommate and the long-suffering superior I just slandered unjustly, I return once again to my feigned sleep.